Uh, TEPCO spokesperson says the company has known for the past two years that a massive amount of groundwater was flowing beneath the Fukushima power plant. Uh, TEPCO spokesperson says the company has known for the past two years that a massive amount of groundwater was flowing beneath the Fukushima power plant. The official says TEPCO experts estimated hundreds of tons of the water could reach the ocean daily. The figure is based on rough records of groundwater we collected. The figure was not reached with the help of outside experts. We collected it ourselves. Until last month, TEPCO officials had denied the possibility that contaminated groundwater was leaking into the ocean. The official says he is unable to explain why it took two years to disclose this fact. Engineers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are struggling to stop hundreds of tons of radioactive groundwater from seeping into the Pacific Ocean every day. Crews have started pumping some of the water from the ground as a temporary measure to contain the leak. Government officials say about 1,000 tons of groundwater could be flowing from a hillside into the soil below the plant every day. Of that, about 300 tons filters through a contaminated area and is laced with radioactive substances. Then it seeps into the sea. Another 300 tons bypasses the contaminated area. The remaining 400 tons of water is leaking into the basements of the buildings housing reactors 1 to 4. That water is also contaminated and it's being pumped out and stored. The crews at the plant have been injecting soil hardening chemicals into the ground on part of the site to stop the water leaking into the ocean. But there are concerns this effort may be pushing water levels higher above the barrier. TEPCO workers are trying to counter this effect by pumping out some of the water from a new well. They are also planning to sink about 30 5 meter long pipes into the ground. Workers will use the pipes to pump out groundwater starting next week. They hope to drain 100 tons per day. Long term, they are considering freezing the soil beneath the buildings. Crews would bury pipes and inside them circulate coolant kept at minus 40 degrees Celsius. The frozen soil would act as a dam to prevent groundwater from reaching the contaminated area. But it could take one to two years to complete the project and maintaining the cooling operations will be extremely costly. Officials in charge of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant have run into another problem. They say a wall they built to stop contaminated groundwater from seeping into the sea has failed. The industry ministry estimates that 300 tons of tainted groundwater are flowing into the Pacific Ocean every day. Engineers from Tokyo Electric Power Company injected chemicals into the earth to harden it and create an underground wall. But they were unable to solidify the soil closest to the surface. TEPCO workers recently dug a well just inside the new wall to monitor the water level. They found it was slightly higher than the top of the wall. The workers are pumping out contaminated groundwater as a temporary measure. For decades, Japanese have used the bombing anniversaries to talk about the destructive force of nuclear weapons. Some have spoken about the risks posed by nuclear power since the 2011 accident at Fukushima Daiichi. Jap Japanese leaders are now getting more involved in the work to control the plant. And they're trying to accelerate the cleanup of contaminated communities around the damaged facility. Environment Ministry representatives say they plan to add some higher ranking officials to the workforce of 430 government employees assigned to the cleanup. The new additions have expertise in public works projects and land purchases. They'll take the lead on the difficult task of building intermediate storage sites to hold contaminated soil and other waste. Municipal leaders are reluctant to allow the facilities to be built within their borders because of fears about radiation. The industry minister says the government will take the lead in drafting a new plan to completely halt the leakage of contaminated water. <laughs> Toshimitsu Motegi urged the members of an expert panel to work out a concrete proposal by the end of September.
We have to speed up our efforts to compile feasible measures, including the possible release of water below the legal limits of contamination into the ocean. Motegi called for a study on how to pump out groundwater from the mountainside of the reactor buildings and other sites. He also suggested creating underground walls to stop the water from reaching the ocean. In May, TEPCO officials announced a similar plan to release groundwater into the sea before it gets into the plant's compounds. Fishermen are against the idea. They say it's hard to tell groundwater and contaminated water apart.
A British newspaper says Zimbabwe's President Robert Mugabe agreed to export uranium to Iran last year in order to get around Western economic sanctions. The report appeared in the Saturday edition of The Times. The newspaper quotes Zimbabwe's deputy mining minister as saying Mugabe proposed the deal to former Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad three years ago. The minister said the government needed the deal with Iran because it was facing a shortage of cash brought on U.S. and European sanctions, including a ban on international trade with Zimbabwe's mining industry. The sanctions were imposed after Mugabe ordered a crackdown on opposition activities. According to the Times, experts think the Zimbabwe uranium will be costly to extract as it contains many impurities. They also say it may not be ready for export for some time. The news surfaced about one week after Iran's new president, Hassan Rouhani, took office. Western countries welcomed Rouhani's expressed readiness for serious talks to resolve the dispute over the country's nuclear developments. Leaders in North Korea may be stepping up their nuclear weapon program. A U.S. think tank says satellite photos suggest they've doubled the size of their uranium enrichment plant. Researchers say the North Koreans may now be able to build two weapons a year. The researchers work at the Institute for Science and International Security. They analyze satellite photos of a uranium enrichment facilities in Yeongbyong. The photos were taken from March to July. Photos from the end of July show the North Koreans had almost doubled the floor size of their uranium enrichment building. The researchers say workers are building another facility nearby. They say that facility or that facility may be connected with the production of fuel for a light water reactor. North Korean officials say they need the reactor for power generation. North Korea disabled the Nyongbyong complex under a six-party agreement in 2007. They've since announced plans to restart an experimental reactor there and expand their nuclear development program. Some survivors of the Nagasaki and Hiroshima bombings are celebrating victory in their battle to get government help. They spent years fighting in court to get officials to recognize them as sufferers of radiation-induced illnesses. Now, Prime Minister Abe says they've won. We won't appeal the court ruling recognizing the plaintiffs as suffering from radiation-induced illnesses. Eight A-bomb survivors won a court case earlier this month. Judges ruled their illnesses were caused by radiation from the bombs. Government officials had denied any connection between their illnesses and the bombings. A government survey has found that more than 70% of the Japanese are satisfied with their lives. The ratio is up for the fifth consecutive year. The Cabinet Office conducted the annual survey in June, covering 10,000 people aged 20 or over. 6,075 people responded to it. 71% of the respondents said they are either satisfied or somewhat satisfied with their lives, up 3.7 percentage points from the previous year. 22.2% said they were somewhat dissatisfied, and another 5.3% said they were dissatisfied. Those polled were also asked what they would like most from the government. Better social security programs such as health care and old age pensions topped the list at about 66 percent.